is about equilateral triangle, the sum of the perimeters of an equilateral triangle and a square is 10. Find the dimension of the triangle and the square that produce a minimum total area. So in, 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 in this problem, I, I gave you two pictures, one equilateral triangle and then one square. They gave me a parameter. So the total perimeter is equals to 10. What does that mean? That means let's do some late labeling. So let's say the square, each side is x. I don't know what it is yet. And then uh, this equilateral. So that means all three sides are have equal length. That is y, y, and y. So that means uh, this, we, you add the three y's up. You add the four x up. The sum of these six, seven edges is equals to ten. I want you to find the dimension of the triangle and the air and the square that has the minimum total area. So the, go go back to my primary and secondary equation. So we have one primary, and then we have one secondary. So for the question. They are asking for total area, right? So that means the primary must be area. So other than that, the secondary must be about perimeter. Okay, so what is the perimeter of the two figures? So the perimeter is equals to 4x, right? x plus x plus x plus x and then plus 3y. So the sum of these seven edges is equals to 10. So 10 is equals to 4x plus 3y. That is my secondary, and then my primary is um, the area, right? The sum of the two, two uh, figures. Okay, so area is equals to, what is the area of, of the square? That is psi times psi, right? So which x times x, that is x squared. And then for the triangle, how do you find the area of the triangle? The triangle is base times height divided by 2. The base is y, but you don't have a height yet. See, there is no height at all. So for the triangle, let's draw the height. So this is the height, right? Okay, uh, the base is equals to y. What about the height? So because for that, we have to draw another picture. So let's cut the triangle into two pieces. We have this, right? This is y, and then oh no, 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 this is y divided by two. I cut that into two pieces, and then this is a y, and I don't know the height. All right. So what is the relationship of these three sides using Pythagorean theorem? So this unknown height square plus y over two square that is equals to y square. Right. This unknown quantity is equals to y square minus y squared divided by 4, right? And then this unknown quantity is 4. So we have a 4y squared minus y squared equals to 3y squared. And then you take the square root on both sides. This unknown quantity is equals to root 3 divided by 2y, right? So the height is equals to root 3 divided by 2 times y. That is the height. Okay, so now can you fill in the blanks for me? Base times height divided by two. So let's let's get the one divided by two right here. One half. The base is y. The height is root three divided by two times y. Okay. So that is the primary equation. What's the what's wrong with the primary? Nothing is wrong. The thing is, I cannot work with two independent variable at the same time. So you have to get rid of one of them. So we have x squared and then we have a y and a y right so this one i would like to uh use y as my only independent variable so that means we have to do some works right here so this one is 4x plus y equals to 10 i want to put that as x equals to some y so first we have 10 minus 3y equals to 4x so x is equals to 10 minus 3y divided by 4. So this is x equals to some y. And then I will put this x in here. So I'm going to put this x in here. So the primary function becomes a function in one independent variable, which is y. So let's write that primary function. So we have 
is not a anymore it's a of y equals to the square of that let's square that so 10 minus 3y divided by 4 square and then plus so that is a square root of 3 divided by 2 times 2 and then a y square so this is one function in one independent variable I can take the derivative of this. Okay, let's clean up this as much as we can because when we take the derivative, we want to keep the procedure easy. So a of y, so four times four is 16. The top is 10 minus three y squared and then plus square root of three divided by four y squared. And then you have to um, fully expand the top should do I need to do that? I don't think I, I need to do so. So the top, I can just go ahead and take the second derivative because the first fraction is really just a 1 over 16 times 10 minus 3y squared, right? I can take the derivative of that. So you bring the 2 down, 16, and then you have 10 minus 3y. And then using a chain rule, take the derivative of the inside, you have a negative 3. All right, so a prime of y, so the first one, let's copy, bring the result over. So that is 16 and then 2 times 10 minus 3y and then times negative 3. And then the second one is easy. You bring the 2 down. So that is the square root of 3 divided by 2, y to the first power. And then you set the whole thing equals to 0. And then you have to solve for y. So I hate fractions. Let's multiply both sides by 8. So I don't need to deal with the fraction. So we are going to multiply both side by 8. Oh, be before we do that, why do I why do I multiply both side by 8? Because this is a 2, right? So that becomes an 8. So if I multiply both side by 8, 8 is big enough to get rid of the 8 and the 2. Okay, so this side, I have a negative 3 times 10 minus 3y, and then uh, 8 divided by 2 is 4, so I have a 4 root 3y, 0 times anything is 0. And then uh, distribution, so negative 30 plus 9y plus 4 root 3y equals to 0, uh, and then toss the 30 to the other side, and then factor out the y, so we have 9 plus 4 divided by square root of 3, so the y is just right in front of me. So y is equals to 30 divided by 9 plus 4 times square root of 3. So this is an exact answer. Uh, I suggest you to, to write, write this out. 1.88, uh, they didn't give me any unit, right? So 1.88 is just 1.88. Uh, you can either keep two or three decimal places depending on the problem. So if you do this online if you're doing your homework online make sure you check the problem carefully are they looking for an exact value or an approximation because if you enter the wrong thing you get no credit even though you get every single steps right so this is what i have to circle i have an exact value i have an approximation so why needs to be this what are they looking for minimum or maximum they are looking for a minimum area so that means I have to use the second derivative minimum, right? This number must be in minimum. So I, I am looking for second derivative, plug in the 1.88. I am looking for a concave up. So when y equals to 1.88, we have a minimum. This 1.88 is also called a critical number. Critical number. Okay, let's proceed to the second derivative. Okay, a prime of y. Well, my a prime of y is pretty complicated. Okay, my a prime of y is right here on top of the on top of the screen. Let's go ahead and take the a. A double prime. So a double prime, oh, a prime of y is actually right here, right here. Okay, what is my a prime of y? That is too complicated. Let's write the a prime of y one, one more time because I don't want to mess up any of this. So that is uh, without the, without the 
um, the mode the A, so we have a negative 3 times 10 minus 3y, 2 and a 16, that becomes a A, and then plus square root of 3 divided by 2 of y, right? Okay, now we do the du double prime. So A double prime of y, Okay, so the first one is uh, the negative a over 3, we do not touch that. And then take the derivative of the linear function, that is a negative 3, and then plus the square root of 3 over 2. So we have a positive plus a positive. I don't care what that equals to exactly. So that is 9 over 8 plus square root 3 divided by 2. That must be positive because everyone is positive. So positive, what is the positive? Uh, positive, do I still need to do the plug-in? Uh, the answer is no, because there is no y for, for you to plug in. So even though you do the plug-in, you still get the same thing. That is just 9 over 8 plus square root of 3 over 2. It's always positive, because there is no y for you to plug in. So the second derivative is always positive. That means the area function, the area function is always concave up concave up looks like this and then you have a critical point y equals to 1.88 and then at 1.88 xcc at 1.88 you have a horizontal tangent line so that means uh, the slope is equals to zero so this is y equals to 1.88 and then you have a minimum right there so the a is always concave up so that means area is minimized when y is equals to 1.88. So to complete the problem, can you find the x for me? So in the problem, the, uh, the perimeter is 4x plus 3y. You can go back to the secondary uh, equation is equals to 10. So you have 4x plus 3 times 1.88 equals to 10. Solve for x, x is around 1.09. So if you follow this di dimension, x equals to 1.09, 1.09, y equals to 1.88, then you can get the minimum area. All right, so that will be all in this problem. If you think my explanation is helpful to your study, click the like, subscribe, share these videos out to your friend. I appreciate your help really much. I see you all in the next lesson.